Hello and welcome to this Electrical Principles training video. In this video we're going to continue our series looking at the subject of electricity and asking the question, what is it? In a previous video we looked at the atomic structure of copper and we saw that on the copper atom on the very outside shell of electrons there was just one electron and that becomes known as a free electron. We then looked at a piece of copper bar and we magnified the atoms inside that and we saw that those electrons are kind of free to bounce from atom to atom. They drift around inside there without any prompting from an external source really. What we're going to do in this video is we're going to look at how we can turn those drifting electrons into something that we can use and we're going to see how that works. So just as a reminder, Here's our copper bar from the previous video, and you can see the electrons drifting about randomly there. Now, if we take our piece of copper bar and we bend it round so that it forms a loop, and we connect the two ends of that loop to a cell, as you can see in this image here, we can see that we've still got those individual copper atoms with the 29th free electron sitting around them. What we're going to see now is that when this circuit is energized, the electrons are going to move in a specific direction. So they're no longer going to drift about randomly, they are going to move in a very specific direction. So which way do you think the electrons are going to move? Now before we answer that question, bear in mind that what we've got this connected up to is a DC source of electricity. And that means that the current is only going to go in one direction around the circuit. It's not going to be alternating like it is in an AC circuit. So, which way do you think the electrons will flow? We've got two options really. They can either move from the positive terminal of the cell to the negative terminal, or they can move from the negative terminal to the positive terminal. So which way will they go? Well, let's start the animation and we'll be able to see. Now it's interesting to see that the electrons are going from the negative terminal, going round the wire to the positive terminal. Now if you thought that the electrons were going to go in the opposite direction, you're not entirely to blame. Because we're often taught and it's often thought that electricity goes from positive to negative. So why the confusion? Well, the reason that the electrons go from negative to positive is that the electrons are negatively charged. And if you think about it logically, it's a little bit like magnetism, which is very closely related to electricity. On the negative plate, we've got an abundance of negative electrons. That's what makes it negative. And of course, the electrons inside the wire are repelled from that plate because we know that like charges are repelled from each other, just like the like poles of a magnet. At the same time, the positive terminal has a lack of electrons and therefore is slightly positively charged. And what that means is that the electrons, which are negatively charged, are drawn to, they're attracted to the positive terminal, again, just like the opposite poles of a magnet. So why might you have thought that the electricity went the other way around the circuit? Well, it's not really your fault. You see, for a long time, we thought that electricity was a flow of positive charges, and then it would make sense for the electricity to go from positive to negative. In fact, in the early years of electrical science and the investigation of that, people were working under this incorrect delusion. And therefore, a lot of the early rules and laws that were thought about and discovered about electricity were actually kind of incorrect because it was based on the assumption that the electricity was going the other way. And so to kind of bring about a balance between the original thinking, rather than going back and rewriting all of the rules that had been in place for a long time, it was decided to explain the situation in the following way. We know now that electrons go from negative round to positive. However, we say that conventional current goes from positive to negative. So when we're talking about current flow, we say that it goes from positive to negative. Now this might seem enormously confusing, so let me try and resolve this for you by means of an analogy. We're going to talk about ceiling tiles. Now we've got on the screen in front of us now uh, a grid of ceiling tiles. And we're going to use these ceiling tiles to kind of explain what this uh, situation with the electrons looks like. So if I draw a circuit on the screen now, looks something like this. 
You can see there that we've taken our wire and kind of made it a lot longer and turned it into a slightly more conventional circuit diagram. What we're going to say for this analogy is that each ceiling tile is like an electron connected to an atom. Now, if I take one of those electrons away, you can see that we're left with a gap in the grid, aren't we? We're left with a gap there. And that's a bit like what happens when an, an electron leaves a copper atom. It leaves a gap that another electron wants to fall into. That's why the copper atom becomes slightly positively charged, because now it's got more protons than it has electrons. And you'll sometimes hear this referred to in electrical science as being a hole. And basically that just means a gap in an atom where an electron can sit. So to illustrate what's going on with electron flow versus conventional current flow, let's start moving our electrons around the circuit. So keep your eye on the electron as it moves, but think about what happens to the hole. So as the electron moves from right to left, can you see there that the hole has gone in the other direction? Now if we move another ceiling tile, or electron, from right to left, again, the hole goes the other way. So what we're seeing here is that even though the electrons are moving in one direction, the hole is moving in the opposite direction. So what that means is that electricity goes from negative to positive, However, the effect of the electricity appears to go in the opposite direction. Now, this might all seem just a little bit confusing to you at this point. Generally speaking, we don't need to worry about this for level two and level three electrical installation work. However, what we do just need to bear in mind is that in an exam, you might be asked the question, what direction does conventional current flow around a circuit? Your answer to that must be, from positive to negative. Likewise, you may be asked in an exam, which way do the electrons flow in a circuit? And in that case, the answer needs to be from negative to positive. So let's just summarize the key points that we've learned from this video. We know now that in an electrical circuit, and remember we're talking specifically about a DC electrical circuit here, we now know that in a DC circuit, the electrons flow from negative to positive, and we also know that due to some early confusion in the understanding of electricity, that it's kind of taken to mean that current flows from positive to negative. We've seen how we can harness the power of the electron and get it moving in the direction that we want it to go, instead of just drifting about randomly through the copper bar. And that flow of electrons is what we call electricity. So when we get asked the question, what is electricity? We're now able to answer confidently, it's a flow of negative electrons through a conductor. Nice and simple. But the next question that we need to answer is, how do we quantify electricity? In other words, how do we count how much current is flowing? How do we measure how much electricity there is in the circuit? Well, that's going to be answered in our next video. Thank you very much for watching.